So this is my friend Anthony from the Magnetic Memory Method. He's a memory expert, and uh, Hello, everyone. switch to him. <laughs> He's going to be giving us some tips on you know how to remember dreams better, how to improve your memory, and just memory in general. So um, yeah, why don't you just go ahead and introduce introduce yourself, I should say, and uh, so tell everyone who you are, what you do. <laughs> All right. Well, hello, everyone. Thanks for having me here, Stefan, and really appreciate the opportunity to speak to you all. I'm a memory enthusiast, a memory student myself, and a teacher of memory techniques at magneticmemorymethod.com. And one of my fascinations in how that I got to know Stefan is that I'm really interested in dream recall as a life development practice, as something that is a memory exercise and something that enables you to develop more creativity and that comes from maybe something we can talk about, basically quite a long period of personal research in how can I remember lots and lots of dreams so I have lots of cool ideas and novels to write and just better insight about myself and even some problem-solving tools without a lot of the woo-woo of dream interpretation. Not that there's anything wrong with dream interpretation, of course, <laughs> but there's a, you know some pretty kooky ideas out there and then there's some real substantial things that you can do yeah yeah i guess it's really subjective with that uh, with dream interpretation cool okay so i've put together some some questions that i think will help you guys just with uh, with dream recall and stuff um so the first one is for improving your dream recall what would you say if you had to distill it into a sort of a basic idea what what should people practice on a daily basis in order to recall their dreams better well the first thing i would say is intend to recall your dreams which is a pretty common technique yeah. and then actually write them down get into the habit of intending to write them down so a lot of people they'll just say i i remember my dreams or i will remember my dreams and so forth but what i did that had the most impact for me and for a lot of my students is i remember my dreams i write them down yeah. and so one thing you can do is have an actual journal that's dedicated just for that date it the night before and have that intention. And then the first thing you do when you get up is start writing in the journal. And within a couple of days, you should start to see not only more dream recall, but greater depth of dream recall in terms of duration yeah. and also uh, multiple dreams or, you know, you, you just see a greater connection to them. So that's very important. Cool. Is there any way that we can remember dreams that have happened sort of more than a few days ago, not, not just, you know, yesterday, but more than a few days ago. Right, yeah. Well, the writing will help with that. Also reviewing the writing that you do. And you can also use a memory palace. And I wouldn't necessarily recommend getting into a memory palace right away. But when, it, when you have reliable dream recall, you yeah. can use a memory palace to remember certain episodes, certain symbols, images, and so forth. And then you'll have much better recall geographically back into the past. Um, there's something called a mnemonic calendar or a magnetic calendar that I teach, and it enables you to actually remember the exact numbers of days. So, uh, you know, it was June 25th that I had a dream where I was with my business partner and great friend Jonathan Levy, and we were on the roof of this building, and we were just talking there about all our business stuff. The important thing was the symbol of being on the roof of this building for yeah. so long. And I remember that it was, uh, sorry, it was May uh, 25th. I remember it was that day because I have an image for every day. Uh, and when I, I still write down my dreams, but I don't really like the effect so much anymore of like getting up and writing down the dreams and then going back to sleep and then getting up. So yeah. what I'll often do is use my bedroom as a memory palace and just create a core image up in the corner of the ceiling and just stick it there. And then I'll remember later when I wake up and I'll just jot down my dreams and so forth. And then it's the 25th because there's a giant nail that I associate there and there's, we can get into the reasons why it's a nail, but anyway, 25 is always a nail. <laughs> it could be Neil wow. Ferguson if you're in the UK like you are. Um, <coughs> is an N and an L. Yeah, no, that's really interesting. So with um, anchoring things, like you say anchoring it to the corner of the room, how would that work? How would, how would I go about doing that just if I knew nothing about memory or dream recall? Well, <clears throat> it really helps to know about the basics of memory, uh, uh, <laughs> memory techniques and memory palaces. So to take a step back, a yeah. lot of how we learn is through association. And so when you're able in your brain to connect different things through strong, powerful associations, then you're going to be able to actually direct your neurochemistry. Like you really literally are doing, doing that. 
and it helps consolidate memories with much stronger links between the neural pathways. That's right. all the science talk. But basically, it's just associating one thing with another. Uh, one way to think about how that might work is if you think about a movie like The Matrix, right? Yeah. And you remember that it's Keanu Reeves as Neo. Well, you're associating Keanu Reeves with Neo. Right. And then if you think, well, who was Morpheus? Well, who's associated with Morpheus? Lawrence Fishburne, right? So yeah. our minds learn those things as associations. Then if I want to remember on the 25th of last month that I had a dream with Jonathan, well, I need to use an association between a dream image and a corner in my bedroom. And I need to wind them together in an associative manner. So I've built a memory palace out of the bedroom. And then I can just get that image, you know, and because I want to remember it was the 25th, I have an image 425, right? And then I just stick it up there and can work in my mind throughout the day these images together. Right. And then I'll be able to tell Jonathan, hey, I had this weird dream on the 25th about you and I. We were up on this roof. And, you know, Jonathan is already in an association, but roof I need to think about. So to remember it, I, it wasn't in the dream, but to make sure I remember that it was on a roof, I see him just pushing his feet through the roof and it's really kind of, I change it a little bit to make it more striking and impactful. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, stuff like that. It's just layers of association. And if you can get a little bit of sense of sound, like hearing his voice, hearing the sound of his feet pushing through the roof, feeling what that would feel like, uh, it's not just visual. It's pushing through all these things, maybe a smell, a taste. Right, yeah, yeah. Um, it really, really helps to make it much more memorable. That's really cool. I've just thought, I think, I don't know if he made this technique up, but um, I read this book by Darren Brown and he was saying about the linking method. And that's right. pretty much um, a similar thing where, you know, you link things one to the other by using all your senses. So like you smell what it would smell like, mm -hmm. you see it. Yeah, that's really cool. And it does work as well because I've tried that as well. So <clears throat> Darren Brown has great stuff. Tricks of the Mind has some good stuff. Yeah. Um, nobody made this up. This has been with humanity sure since yeah. the beginning of time. <laughs> And we know that it has because we have archaeological and prehistoric records of Aborigines, for example, really? associating imagery right, with the location of plants that you could eat during a drought. Right. right. And they would pass this knowledge on to each other in order to help future generations survive. Right. So yeah. there's a survival advantage to memory techniques. The book to read on this is called The Memory Code by Lynn Kelly. She goes deep into the prehistoric origins. It's in the Buddhist traditions. Wow. It's in the Stations of the Cross in Catholicism. It's in remembering the fire alarm in elementary school. Yeah. Association to location, to imagery, to things that you need to remember is just part of how humanity has survived. And the more you get really, really strategic about how you use it, the better your life becomes. And you not only survive, but you become more competent as a human being. Yeah, I suppose it was necessary to know where the, the right plants are to eat. And What about memories that we maybe don't know we have, if that makes sense? So memories that we, they, they are there, but we don't know them because obviously we've forgotten them. Is there any way of accessing right. those? Well, I don't want to speak too certainly, but yes, yeah. I imagine that there are. Um, but we have to be careful about that because we know that when we recall information, we actually change it. Right? Yeah. So uh, we can be very inventive and we can be remembering things incorrectly and we can be remembering things that never happened at all mm. and we'll feel very convinced that they happened. So we want to be careful about that. Uh, and everybody has heard about false testimony, false witness testimonies yeah. and the danger that that creates. Uh, but I'd rather put it in the sense that if you... I mean, I just, I had a YouTube video that I just put out the other day with a young woman named Olivia from the UK, actually, here in Australia. And I, I just put the camera on and asked her if she wanted a quick memory exercise. And I asked her, you know, do you remember grade uh, five, how old you were and so forth? Uh, or she asked me if she could help recall memories from when she was 10 and she was at grade five in the UK. And I said, well, get out a piece of paper and draw a square that represents the school and right. then start to draw the squares of the classrooms in the school. And then start to ask yourself questions like, what was my teacher's name? What did my teacher look like? What was my favorite novel? What were my favorite music albums? And I shared with her some of my examples so she could understand. Yeah. And then you can say, who was my best friend? What was their favorite album? And so forth. And you're maybe not necessarily recalling memories that you've forgotten that you ever had, but you're strengthening your connection with your own life. 
And these all become the path to strengthening your memory for the future of your life mm. and the health of your <clears> brain. <throat> and so I imagine that that's a way that you'll recall things that you don't remember. And I've gone and done these memory experiments, and I have some recordings of de demonstrations where I've gone to my friends from elementary school and just done this. Who was our teacher in grade three? Yeah. And it was like, Mrs. Van Ryswick, and the, who was your best friend? And you didn't just, you're, it's amazing the vast amount of information that's in your head yeah. that you remember if you just ask. That's really amazing. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, no, I actually, um, I sort of see roughly the same thing with, uh, with Dream Recall, where right. to remember the, like more details of a dream, you should just start by the basics, which is, you know, where was I? And then ask a series of questions like, what was the temperature? You know, was it? Which season was it? What was the weather like? Where were the other people? Yeah, yeah. And you start to build up a bigger picture of the whole thing. If people only had 10 minutes a day to dedicate to improving their memory, what would you suggest they practice or do? I'd suggest, well, if you're interested in remembering your dreams better, I'd suggest that you practice recalling your dreams and try to work up to a memory palace approach to recalling dreams mm. so that you can have the best of both worlds. You still want to write your stuff down, yeah. but you can actually not have to get up all the time because you'll be able to just wake up and you'll say, oh, yeah, I remember this dream. And you'll stick it in this corner and then you have another dream and you put it over there. And you know that effect. I'm sure you've had this where you yeah. you have like these cluster of episodes and you actually can distinguish them in your mind, yeah. right? And you can recall them all just using your room. Like take four dreams and just boom, boom, and then behind you and then get up and then write down what you remembered. Yeah. But here's the thing. This is what's really going to give you memory improvement as well as more dream recall. Before you write anything down, recall it, right? Because right. some people, they will link writing with remembering, but actually bring it to mind first and then write it down. Right. And that will give you great memory exercises. It will improve your memory across the board, and you'll get more out of dreams. Yeah. And uh, if you only have 10 minutes a day every morning, you're going to have a great impact from that over the next – 10 weeks or so or you know I still do this years and years later and it's really powerful yeah I mean I suppose in an ideal world you are dedicate more than 10 minutes a day but I, I get a lot of emails from people saying like I'm too busy you know I don't have time right, right, right. but yeah I mean, well you know we can be sympathetic sympathetic to that but when it comes to memory you do have time yeah because you use your memory all day long <laughs> yeah yeah right? it's, and it's if important. you just change how you think about your memory then you'll see that you can do memory exercise from sun up to sundown yeah yeah, yeah. And, and beyond Build it into what you, can you do, do every day. Pictures. Yeah, no, absolutely. Okay, um, can you sort of to finish up here? Could you maybe give some tips on how to just general tips on how to improve memory and be able to recall things faster? Right. Well, in terms of just generally, yeah. Let's start with the foundations. Okay. So sleep, better sleep, better diet, mm. better hydration. Notice you're getting nice and <laughs> hydrated there, which yeah. is good policy. And uh, more, more fitness. Like if you just start with the body first, your brain is part of your body. It's physical. It's built of chemicals. And the more optimized that is, well, here's a couple of things. First, you're going to pay attention better. You're going to be more pain-free, mm. right, especially if you're an older person. Because pain is the way of not paying attention to what's happening to you. If you're not paying attention to what's happening in the world, you're not going to remember it. And so that's the first thing with the foundations. Then learn the memory palace technique. Make sure you learn it from someone who really knows what they're talking about because there's a lot of bad information about it, about it out there that'll cause you lots of struggles with it. Um, and then learn something called the major. Sometimes you'll hear it called the major system. I call it the major method because it's not really a system until you build it as a system for yourself. Yeah. So understand the methods and the principles. Get those two things working together. You'll be able to remember anything you want very, very fast. These are skills. Sometimes you got to think of it like push-ups. If you can't do a full push-up from the floor, Start from your knees. If you can't do a push-up from the knees, start from the wall. Yeah. There's no shame in it. The only shame is if you don't do it. Yeah. And uh, even then, you know, don't beat yourself up about it. But there's no free will, right? So, <laughs> but if you if you feel the calling to do it, just get the memory palace nailed and learn the major method, and you will have so much more advantages than anyone else because you'll be able to memorize any number, any name, any foreign language vocabulary or phrase, anything yeah. that you want, any list of instructions but you need those two techniques as the foundation on top of better health. Yeah, that's really cool. Because I, I always say pretty much the same thing. It's a holistic approach with health, mind, sleep. It all works yeah. together because the body is intelligent and you give it what it needs. <laughs> Who would have thought? Exactly. Right? 
<clears throat> you, you don't want a two-legged stool. You want definitely that stool to sit firmly, yeah. and then you'll be able to you know you'll be able to accomplish anything that you want if yeah. you just surrender yourself. You know, my mentor Tony Buzan from the UK. There, he uh, went and I trained with him and had dinner with him, and he said something so impactful. It's just that the rules will set you free, mm. and the memory of every person works exactly the same according to fundamental rules that are in the brain structure, in the brain chemistry. Yeah. If you just understand what those rules are, you will be free to learn as fast as you want, as much as you want. So that that's I amazing. pass on directly from him to you. Yeah, that's amazing. Cool, thank you very much. Um, I was going to say, we are planning something special for howtolisted.com email subscribers. Um, but for now, I mean, all of this stuff, you know, there's so much to talk about, so much to learn. Um, you have actually got a, a, several courses, right? Um, yes. For people that are just, they have no idea where to start, right? They just want to improve their memory. Um, probably more towards Dream Recall. Um, where would you suggest they go? I'll put a link in the description. Um, yeah, well, follow that link that you're going to put there. And here's the thing. Avail yourself of the free training that you'll get and the material that you'll get. Because one of the things that makes the difference here is that you actually take it one sip at a time, which SIP stands for study the techniques, implement the techniques, and practice the technique with information that's going to improve your life. Dreams right. will improve your life. The more you can remember your dreams, the more you'll be able to use them as tools of life improvement, mm. and then just go from there. If being able to study for your exam better means memorizing numbers better, then study the techniques, implement the techniques, and practice the techniques with numbers or yeah. with names and so forth. But just take it one sip at a time, SIP, and we'll hook you up with the material for that down in the link below. Cool. Yeah, guys, go and check out the link below. Um, but more importantly, make sure you're subscribed to the, um, the email list on howtolucid.com because we're going to be doing a special discount offer for you guys. It's going to be really exciting. Um, there's going to be some giveaways and, and uh, all sorts of stuff. So, yeah, make sure you subscribe to that. I'll put the link for that in the description as well. And, um, yeah, thank you very much, Anthony. Thank you for joining us thank and you. thanks for the tips. <laughs> really appreciate the time and uh, to everyone just get into this world because memory is so beautiful and the quality of your life really comes down to the quality of your memory.